Hello, friends, and welcome to episode 821 of the Juice Box Podcast. Welcome back. Today, Jenny and I are going to be going over the mathematical equation that will help you come up with your insulin to carb ratio. Don't worry, it's not really like super confusing or anything. While you're listening, please remember that nothing you hear on the Juice Box podcast should be considered advice, medical or otherwise. Always consult a physician before making any changes to your healthcare plan or becoming bold with insulin. If you like Jenny and you want to hire her, you can. She works at integrateddiabetes.com. Are you a U.S. resident who has type 1 or is the caregiver of someone with type 1? Oh, if you are, this is great news because you can go to t1dexchange.org forward slash juice box and fill out the survey. Every completed survey benefits the podcast and type 1 diabetes research. t1dexchange.org forward slash juice box. At the end of this episode, I'll tell you about more juice box podcast episodes and series that will help you with insulin to carb ratio. So hang out till the very end. This episode of the Juice Box Podcast is brought to you today by the Contour Next One Blood Glucose Meter. Learn more at contournext.com forward slash juice box. This is my favorite meter. It's incredibly accurate, easy to carry. I'll tell you more about it in a little bit but contournext.com forward slash juice box. Get yourself a great meter. The podcast is also sponsored today by AG1 from Athletic Greens. Are you looking for a green drink that tastes good? You're looking for AG1. I'm using it every day. You could too. Athleticgreens.com forward slash juice box to get a, by the way, why would you use my link? Because when you do, you get a free year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs on top of your order athleticgreens.com forward slash juice box. All right, Jenny, we're going to have this little uh, three episode uh, series about setting, doing the math, the math. I, I want to say math like funny, but I can't get it out right. The math of, um, of, of diabetes. So we've, uh, we've recorded about setting up your basal insulin. This episode is going to be setting up your insulin to carb ratio. So uh, the total grams of carbs, um, Versus the total insulin you need. Basic cool. I- basic idea, uh, if your insulin to carb ratio is 1 to 10, then you use one unit of insulin to cover 10 carbohydrates. Right. Okay. So how, do, how does someone whose insulin to carb ratio is 1 to 10, how do they know that? Who told them? And what if they want to change it? I think the first question is, Usually it starts with some type of educator or um, physician endocrinologist that says, you know, we're going to use um, we're going to use the strategy of allowing you to choose the food that you eat mm-hmm. and count up carbohydrates. That's, you know, we're very carb centered in diabetes education. Um hmm. And so we're going to use a ratio of every time you eat 15 grams, you need to take one unit of insulin. I think 15 is the most commonly used insulin to carb ratio. Oh, no kidding. Okay. At least on an initial, like, we're going to set you up. You're one to 15. I mean, when I was first set up, I know that I didn't need one to 15, (laughs) but that's what I was set up with is a (laughs) one to 15 ratio. Okay. Okay. Um, Which leads to why we are talking about this because you need to have an idea of how to adjust that. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, Which brings in a rule. It's called the 500 rule. Do you know the 500 rule, Scott? I don't think I, I mean, do I know it off the top of my head? No. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> no. Okay. Well, the 500 rule essentially, um, I I don't know. I'm not going to say I know who decided on the 500 rule, okay. but essentially it, it's assuming the on average consumption of the average person of their carbs and what their liver is sort of like outputting naturally. And so we use this rule of 500. 
and you take your total daily insulin dose. So mm-hmm. total daily is both basal and bolus together. Right. So let's say you use 30 units of insulin a day total. Okay. Okay. You're going to divide 30 Mm -hmm. into 500. And that's going to give you an average insulin to carb ratio of about 16. Okay. Okay. Yes. I did it wrong, but okay. (laughs) (laughs) 500 divided by 30. What did I just do wrong? Hold on. I don't know. (laughs) 16. Okay, so 16. The f- it's actually 16.6, 6, but you right. know, we don't do like half grams. So it well, wasn't 15,000 because I was like, I know I'm doing this wrong. <laughs> Boy. Dude, it's not 15,000. No, I promise. I stopped um, paying attention to school around seventh grade, is what I just figured out. <laughs> okay, or so math. That's yeah, the part yeah, that at, you stop paying part. attention to. So, um, so I take the so, 500, I, I have a 30, 30 units, my total daily insulin. Yep. And I take the 500. I do this math. I come up with 16.6. So this is my. Starting insulin to carb ratio. One it would unit. be a a general starting place, especially if you are trying to figure out where to make some adjustments. Mm-hmm. Let's say that you are, let's say, and I will say that the 500 rule is, as I said earlier, it's more to the conservative, mm-hmm. right? Um, I mean, I know that my insulin to carb ratios. I on I average somewhere between about 25 to 28 units a day okay. total insulin. That's my total. Um my insulin to carb ratios are more aggressive. Listen, if you're using insulin or you have diabetes, you need a blood glucose meter. And you would like that meter to be accurate and easy to use. Am I right? Of course I am. I mean, this is not any great uh, stretch of the imagination. Well, guess what? I know the meter for you. It's called the Contour Next One blood glucose meter. My daughter's been using it for many years now. It is incredibly accurate, and it has second chance test strips. These are pretty much the big parts of why I'm telling you about it today. Accuracy is key, of course, and not wasting test strips is nice because they're expensive, right? Now, why else may you want this uh, little dream of a meter? Well, it's easy to carry, easy to use, easy to read, has a bright light for nighttime viewing. And, I mean, it's 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 pretty jimmy. It's nice. You know what I mean? Contournext.com forward slash juice box. Head over there for more information about a blood glucose meter than you'll ever need. Actually, there are also links there. In case you want to buy the meter now online, you can. There's like six different places you can buy the meter from right now online. At my link, you will see all of them. Contournext.com forward slash juice box. Easy to use, easy to carry, second chance test strips. Maybe cheaper in cash than the meter you have now is through your insurance. You should check it out. Contournext.com forward slash juice box. Are you looking for a green drink that doesn't taste like a green drink? If you are, you're looking for AG1 from Athletic Greens. I started taking AG1 because I was never quite sure of the quality of my diet and wanted to make sure that I was getting the essential vitamins that I may be missing. And now I take it every day. And you could too. I find that AG1 eases my digestion and leaves me feeling energetic. AG1 is great for any lifestyle, keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, you name it, gluten-free. And it only has one, actually less than one gram of sugar per serving. There's no GMOs, no nasty chemicals, or artificial anything. You should check it out. Athleticgreens.com forward slash juice box. Actually, Athletic Greens is trying to make this uh, a good experience for you. They're going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit my link, athleticgreens.com forward slash juice box. Did you know that Athletic Greens was created when the founder experienced a ton of gut health issues and ended up on a complicated and expensive supplement routine? That's right. And now here we have it, AG1. It's in a powder. You just scoop in the water, shake up, drink, you're done. I think I must spend my first eh, 30 to 60 seconds every morning with AG1. But that's it. It's not a big commitment of time, but it is paying me back. Athleticgreens.com forward slash juice box. 
There are links to AG1 and the Contour Next One blood glucose meter, as well as all the sponsors, in the show notes of the podcast player you're listening in now and at juiceboxpodcast.com. Or you can just type in the links, athleticgreens.com forward slash juicebox, contournext.com forward slash juicebox. When you use my links, you're supporting the production of the show, and I very much appreciate it. Let me get back now to Jenny and the math. My insulin to carb ratios are more aggressive than what that 500 rule factors out to be. Okay. But it is a very good starting place until you are able to evaluate your trends and assess where you need to shift that a little bit. Mm-hmm. So again, if it, it's from a starting place, if you have absolutely no idea what you're doing yeah. <laughs> and you're just, all you know is that, gosh, I use about 50 units a day. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. Then let's, and you're really wanting to get into better coverage of your meal times and everything. And right now you're just sort of willy nilly taking some doses. Right. This will give you a very fair starting place. Okay. Is this statement that I have found at the NIH, the 500 rule, 500 divided by total daily insulin is often used to find a starting point for the insulin to carb ratio. That is how many grams of carbs one unit of insulin covers. So that's a that's a perfect statement for what we're talking yes, about. Okay. Absolutely. Right. Perfect statement. Yes. Okay. So, so Okay, so we've been diagnosed and somebody's you've heard the episode about setting your basal insulin. You've got your basal insulin set pretty well and mm-hmm. you're seeing nothing like what you want. You have stability. Let's say your basal insulin is good. So you have stability away from food and away from carbs. So like when you're sleeping overnight or, you know, when it's been three hours since a meal and you're just sitting around, your blood sugar is sitting stable where you want it to be. Mm-hmm. And, and now, but you're seeing like wonkiness at your meal times. First thing to think about is, am I, I mean, I know this doesn't belong here based on the title, but I still think you have to say, am I pre bolusing my meals? Correct. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So this yeah, is yeah, yeah. this is math for this is how much insulin I need for this many carbs if we're setting up a fair fight between the insulin and the carbs. Not if I eat and then shoot the insulin in later or eat at the same time that I'm shooting or something like that. Correct. Right. You have to have the the second piece for analysis to evaluate from a starting place. I'm going to try this ratio. But you have to give the insulin a fair fight. Right, right. So again, pro tip series, <laughs> you probably should listen to that about how to actually use insulin. I think there's a pre-bolus episode. Um, I, but I would l- listen. In the end, this is all great. I would just tell you to listen to the pro tip series if you want to understand how insulin works. But to get this actual rule, this piece of math, this is it right here. One more time, Jenny. Let's just make up a different number. I look in my okay. pump, I look in my pump. I've had diabetes forever, and I look at my pump and I say, I use. I'm just going to make crazy numbers. I use 48 units of insulin every day on an average. It's between I don't know 50 and 46. I'm calling it 48. Okay. Right. I take 500 and divide it by 48. Yes. And my insulin to carb ratio is one per about 10.4. Correct. Yes. You have no idea how proud I am of myself. <laughs> Your math teacher would be very, very proud of you. No, every math teacher I ever had, I think, thought I had bumped my head right before I walked into the door. (laughs) So I was like, hi, I'm here to not learn math today. Very bad at it. Um, But, okay, that's it. All right. Super simple, right? For the 500 rule. The 500 rule, that's for insulin for your food. Yes. Right. But how about the moment when... Arden moves into college and I'm calling you from a target while we're shopping for things. And you say, don't use 500. What did you tell me to do? You gave me a different number, I think. Right. You can, um, you can make that a little bit more conservative or you can make it a little bit more aggressive by Mm -hmm. just notching it up or down. Right. right? And that, I mean, it brings in to the next, next part of bolusing our corrective insulin, right? Where you can make the factor to figure out a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more um, conservative. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you could certainly say the 400 rule instead of the 500 rule, but in general, that 500 rule is really going to give you a starting place, a good starting place. And I think it's easier to remember 
than, gosh, it could go up a little bit, it go down a little bit. Well, you're going to do that anyway in your tweaking, Mm -hmm. right? Um, Now, in terms of a good place to start, you may also consider that sensitivity for every person in a general statement is often that heavier weight, less activity, you are going to require more insulin okay. than somebody who is a lower weight and more active, or potentially maybe they're the same weight as you, but their weight is based on more muscle-based mass mm-hmm. and they are much more active than you. That person, even though they're the same weight as you, may have heightened sensitivity to insulin. Right. Their insulin needs may be very much reduced compared to where you are. Yeah. And And even though we don't talk about it very much, although there are episodes about digestion, that person might also be more likely to be eating cleaner food that's going through their system, not impacting their blood sugar as longer during the digestion process. There's a lot of things to think of. So, okay. So are we good here on this? We'll move on to making an episode about insulin sensitivity. Yes. Yeah. And will we be talking about something that has 1500 in it when we get there? No. No? Okay. (laughs) I thought I knew something. All right. That's okay. I'll see you in the next episode. Okay. Bye. All right. A huge thanks to AG1 from Athletic Greens. Head over there right now. Athleticgreens.com forward slash juice box. Get your first order, five free travel packs, and a year's worth of vitamin D. Athleticgreens.com forward slash juice box. I also want to thank the Contour Next One blood glucose meter. And remind you to go to contournext.com forward slash juice box. Find out about the little meter that could. Like, you know, the little engine that could. It's just a great meter. I just, I count on it and it comes through. Contournext.com forward slash juice box. And of course, Jenny, who works at integrateddiabetes.com. You can find her there. All right, I'm going to thank you right now for listening. And then give you some more episodes to listen to about insulin to carb ratio. So this is interesting because I think the um, Defining Diabetes episode about carb absorption and digestion would be helpful here, episode 668. I think that the episode called The Perfect Bolus in the Pro Tip series would help. Let me find out what that one is for you. Sorry. You might think I would have done this before, but mm. episode 226. Again, the entire Pro Tip series would be incredibly valuable. If you're new to diabetes, Check out the Bold Beginning series. Uh, If some of these terms are lost on you, you're looking for the Defining Diabetes series. All the terms are listed out there. There's part of me that also thinks you should find um, the pro tip about fat and protein and a a lot of the other episodes we have too about how to bolus for fat and protein. And if you're thinking to yourself, why would I bolus for fat and protein, Scott? They don't have carbs in them. Oh, Well, then you're really going to love them. Episode 263, Diabetes Pro Tip, Fat and Protein. Uh, Episode 471, Bolusing Insulin for Fat. Uh, What else do we have here? If you need that explained to you, episode 360 is a defining diabetes episode. uh, That's called Defining Diabetes Fat and Protein Rise. There's a lot here that would help you. Uh, In general, your carb ratio is the beginning, right? But it doesn't it doesn't cover everything because of the glycemic load and glycemic index of foods, which reminds me that you're looking for episode 391 diabetes pro tip glycemic index and load. Again, if you don't know why you're looking for that, there's a defining diabetes episode about it. Listen. If you're new, bold beginning series. It's available in your, in your app, it's available at juiceboxpodcast.com. You can find a list of the episodes that are in the series at juiceboxpodcast.com or in the private Facebook group in the featured tab. Really, if you're new, please start with that one. Then move on, if you like, to the Defining Diabetes episodes. All these terms and many more are defined in short episodes. And then there's the Diabetes Pro Tip episodes, which really digs into how to take care of yourself. So get the beginning series. Get your feet wet, learn about the the different terms and what they mean, and then go listen to that pro tip series and get the A1C that you want and deserve. Thank you so much for listening. 
I'll be back very soon with another episode of the Juicebox Podcast.